and I have just completed an interview outside and we're quite excited about it. This is the video that we've been talking about that is all about aging, but with a twist. Aging as to a relationship between grandchildren and grandparents. We are also talking to some college age students who wanted to know the answer to six questions, which we've addressed. And they want to know how they can help their grandparents to have a purpose in life, be sustainable, be energetic, and to be looking forward to life. So it's not all about all the problems of aging that we experience. You know those. We'll talk about those and always do. I want you to enjoy this and I want you to please make comments because I have encouraged the college students to read your comments on this too. Now I have to tell you, the airplanes were giving us trouble outside. We tried to use our microphones and we found out that they only worked with my old camera, not my new one. So we couldn't wear these. And I wanted to do portions of this interview over. Moosey said, no way, it's good the way it is. The heck with the airplanes, you'll still enjoy it. So I'm hoping that you'll forgive the noise from up in the skies. Well, hello to all of you, my friends, and also our college teacher, Pam, and Pam students. As you all know, this is my Moosey. <laughs> I haven't been in a classroom so in such a long time, but what I do like to say is start things off a little on the light side. Could that couple get that dog out of the classroom, please? And my dear in the back, no mascara while I'm talking. What did you want me to say? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're here not only for all of you, my friends, all of the subscribers and all the people that view us to talk today about aging. Now, Moose and I are 86 and we feel that we've been very blessed to have number one, lived this long and second of all, to be so involved and to have a very large, wonderful family. Very, very blessed. And by the way, we have been grandparents since this is all about grandparents and the, the older folk. We have been grandparents since we were 45 years old. So we have some experience, I would say. We also have 13 going on, 14 great-grandchildren. And we're gonna answer basically six questions that Tam, the teacher of this college age course in aging, has presented to us. And you're gonna get double opinions on this. First question is, how do you keep your mind so sharp? You go. I think I keep my mind sharp by being involved with current affairs, political affairs, foreign affairs. And what happens is, in, in observing something that's going on, I get a question and then I research it. And keep my mind by, cut. for instance, I, I read everything I could find on the Middle, Middle East because I couldn't figure out why everybody was fighting over there. So I researched the heck out of that. That was good on my, my mind. How about yourself? Well, I, I have to be involved in something. We had four kids within five years, which is just the way we wanted it. Then we lived in Scotland for a while and we had a little layover and then we got busy when we were home. We had two more, Colleen and Mikey. So I had the last two children at, I think I was 38 and 39. So we've been raising babies and children all these years. And besides that, I was a school teacher. I went back to teaching for a couple of years. And then we had Mikey and Colleen. And soon after that, I went into real estate. I always felt I could raise the kids, have fun with them, do everything, but I had to have something else going. To keep your mind sharp. Right. I am a big Google person. I, one of my sayings is that 
I'm smarter now than I ever was because I'm so curious about things. And if I don't know something that comes up on um, in a discussion or on television or when I'm reading, I want to know all about it. And I go to Mr. Google, and by the way, he knows almost but everything. But you also go to YouTube for a lot of oh, instruction. Oh, I do, I do. Yeah. I, I'm constantly uh, doing tutorials. I also had a business um, in the uh, late 80s where I opened a retail shop and then we ran a national catalog. And I don't know why, but I've been successful at all those things. And I can do it as well as handle all the kids and keep my moosey happy too. I think the second question, you've worked it all in. The second question is, do you have to work at it or is it just who you are? And I think you said it's probably two things. It's who you are right? and you have to work on it. Right. It is who I am. I just have to be doing it. And speaking of the disabilities, I hit 86. Thank God before that, I was running around doing everything. And the arthritis set in, I tore my meniscus in my knee, and I have pain almost every day, but no way am I going to let that get me down. I'm still running around and doing everything, and I hope that I can last this way. May I interject? Yes. I will be 87 on April 8th, so if you want to send something to me, go ahead. <laughs> That's right, I forgot, you're almost 87. Yeah, ma'am. Oh, we are blessed, aren't we? All right, what's the next question? How do you stay engaged and energetic even if you have... Disability. The answer is kind of um, getting into the second question here. So do you want to say something about that? Well, how do you keep so engaged means you're meeting with the kids, primarily with the kids. We, we don't belong to the marching band or something like that. Yeah, or well, Moosey's not a golfer. I'm not a tennis player. <laughs> So it's, true. it's kids and we do have a few very wonderful friends, but honestly, most of what we get the energy to get out to do is something with the kids. Yeah. Right. And we love that. We still drive down to San Diego, which is about a two and a half hour drive, two hour drive from here. We spend the weekend with Mikey and his kids. And I would say that in this conversation, there has to be something said about Moosey's relationship with a couple of our grandsons. And one of Mikey's sons is one of them. Will that come up in the next question? Next question is, how can the children help their the grandparents feel valued? You have asked, as uh, the students of Pam, and I will address you, you want to know what you can do to help your grandparents be more engaging and more interested in a good, sustainable life. What makes an older person feel appreciated? This is very simple, and already many of my regular viewers, my wonderful ladies and gentlemen, have answered this. It is to stay in touch with them, call them if you live far away, make them feel relevant. You know, at one time in your life, guys, <laughs> you were the little guys and your grandparents were the teachers along with your parents and whatever your parents learned came from your grandparents and they still retain all that knowledge and excitement within them but many people have this stereotypical feeling that as you grow older you lose it well you don't lose it right Moses right okay so I talk about this as a circle of love. When, when we were younger and we had all these young grandparents, uh, grandchildren, our circle of love was real big and their circle of love was big. When they were little, they loved us. They wanted to come and stay with us in our bed and, and eat ice cream and read books and hug us and everything. And as you grow older, that circle of love gets a little bit smaller each year because, because you're human. You, you acquire friends at school. As you get older, you have girlfriends, guy friends, you have friends for life, and you have other interests. You still love and adore your grandparents, but you know what? You must tell them that. 
they must know they don't have to be the number one in your life anymore. Now we've accepted that and that happens normally. It's natural. So you know what I was thinking about the circle of love? I think it expands and detra uh, contracts. And I think it's cross feeding this way and that way. For instance, if, if you are feeling depressed and that happens for like an instant or two, not a whole day. Right. And one of the kids comes in who we live nearby I say, what Nanny needs right now is to be listened to. So go in to their room and listen to them talk, and you will bring their spirits up. I think you, as a student, need to be told to go to them and listen to them, even if it, even if you're not totally interested in what I have to say about my poker game. Listen to me, and I'll feel better. That's how you can be useful to a grandparent. Uh, and I also might add to that, tell them about what you're doing. They would love to hear about that. They oh, want yeah. to listen to you too. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and there's a couple of the kids that I don't know enough about. Right. They go, I mean, um, a little girl up here who's in college, She's doing stuff that is beyond my recognition, our recognition. Yeah. Because she's not here, she's at school. College. But the things yeah. she's doing are getting awards. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, she is so busy. She has three college jobs. She's on the National Honor Roll. She's a junior in college. And she's, she's into film writing, a wonderful writer. And, and um, she's so busy that she doesn't get home too often. And we would love to hear more about her. When she is here, she does give us time. And, um, yeah. but, but we understand that many of these kids are, are, are busy. But call them up on the phone, guys. Give your grandparents, give them something to make them feel that they are not invisible. And um, all my friends, you viewers, we talk about feeling invisible a lot of times. And I'll tell you, when you get old, very old like us, and I'm going to say it right I'm now. I'm not very old. No, we are. We are in the super ager bracket. And, and that's pretty good to have made it here so far. But just know that you must give them time. Just make time for them. I guess what I want to add is that some of the kids are obscure. They don't understand uh, what's going on with us. And a good example was one of the boys who was brought up, coddled, and went away to college. And when he came back, I told him that you needed to be sp spoke to and listened to. And he spent a lot of time with you, just standing in a doorway and nodding his head. Why me? Because he happened to be on the property and he came down to visit. Well, actually he was helping me with a lot of jobs I couldn't physically do, and, right? And what my point I was trying to make was this coddled boy found his soul. I'm, I'm not kidding. He's a different man having spent the time with you. Well, it's not so, me. He, he, your time with him is, is what I thought you'd talk about because you and he have such a wonderful relationship. They, um, he's away at college also, and, and they every basketball game, they, they text back and forth about what's happening as the game is proceeding. When, when he's home from college, he sits out here with Moosey and chats, listens to Moosey. I mean, I would thought you would talk about your, your own life with Brendan. No, I've, I felt, I've, well, I, I told him that he had found his soul, but he had found his soul through interface with you. Now, that's my I, opinion. And that's what I mean by the circle of love cross feeding. Yeah. Makes now, you feel good, makes him feel good. Now, we do have 20 grandchildren and 13 great-grandchildren. 
And it's not that these other kids don't have those qualities. We're very fortunate to live in a little uh, tiny hundred year old guest house on our youngest daughter's property. So we grew up, we've been here 20 years, we've been retired on this property. And we have grown up with um, their three children. So we have, we have a closer probable, obvious, it's just obvious that we would have a closer relationship with these kids. And, and although we are in contact with everybody else, because they live a little further away and we don't see them, you know, constantly, doesn't mean to say that they wouldn't respond the same way. It's just, it's just that human nature of not being constantly near each other that makes that little circle of love just maybe expand a little bit more with some of the children. And when I when we go, for instance, over to our, our first grandchild <laughs> had our first great grandchild. Yes. <laughs> and they're a family of three girls. <clears throat> and when we go there, I work at building a relationship with each one of them. I've told them secrets, don't tell anybody. Yeah. <laughs> I tell them what their outstanding um, uh, characteristic is that make them so wonderful and so i'm outreaching to them yep uh, and <laughs> they don't outreach to me necessarily but okay you work well at it. you work at it all right here's where i i have to tell you how how th that knowledge kind of drips down from the parents to the grandkids now now the parents obviously nurtured us and then they taught their children to nurture us. And Bridget is a wonderful nurturer, constantly in touch with us. So she has taught, she and her husband, who is a wonderful guy, and they have taught their children that this is how you respect and honor um, the grandparents. And actually, we're their great grandparents. And those little girls who range from about eight up to 16, when Moosey was in the hospital um, recently with, um, oh, a back pain, uh, they came and visited him in the hospital and they sang to him, they gave him hugs. These kids are not afraid to give hugs and tell us they love us. And um, every one of our grandkids and great-grandchildren have told us that. That's important. Tell them that you love them and that you miss them when you don't see them, right? Yeah. Now, I want Moosey to tell a little story, and I don't know whether we're getting off the questions or not, but we're talking about relationships between grandkids and, and grandchildren and how you make us feel that we're still relevant, we're not invisible, and that we are loved. And that's the big question. No, that's the big answer. I want you to talk something about your relationship with Dane. Now, once again, this is one of our grandkids. Well, Dane, Dane, is, Dane is in San Diego, and we see a lot of him. We go down there a lot. Now, he's 14, right? Just started high school, right? Mm -hmm. well, his age is important. And, and by the way, he is very high IQ'd. And so as, a, as, a, as an example, he played the trumpet in the high school band, marching band and orchestration band. As soon as I heard out that he was playing trumpet, I went and I dragged out the great trumpeters of all time, Wynton Marcellus and Harry James, you know, and also music, classical music for trumpets, um, and pushed it on him to, and then he, he ate it up. He went and listened to uh, Dvorak or something. They were in, they were in, uh, uh, Czechoslovakia, and he listened to, to Dvorak uh, Symphony. Anyway, it was, it took activity on my part to build our relationship on something besides, you know, playing checkers or something. Yeah. Now, um, I, one of my um, joys is sitting there watching this interaction between that 14 year old and Moosey. Now the other day they were talking about what what was the discussion and Dane was sitting there lapping up this information. 
Dane has learned, he's one of those grandkids that learned that, hey, my Moosey, that's what all the kids call him, by the way. He's Moosey to everybody. My grandfather really does know a thing or two, and I am learning from him. Now, this is a guy that pretty much knows a lot of stuff most 14-year-olds don't know, just like his father, Mikey. But my joy is watching him. What were you talking about with Dane just last weekend when we were down there? Well, we're talking about a lot of things, but one of the things that fits into the, the, the circle of love is my notion that if you drop a stone into a pool, it sends out circles, concentric circles, and you don't know where they're going to end up. And so that is can be a manifestation of your love. For instance, right now, buddy, I'm talking to him, the girls are out getting yogurt, and what they do when they get yogurt is they buy yogurt for somebody else, some poor person maybe. That's called paying it on. Forward, well, paying it forward, yeah. You drop it in and it goes in. Well, you don't know how it's gonna affect people downstream from them. And I can I have examples of it that happened to me, which I told him in detail. And he, that will stay with Dane. He will think about that. And you don't know where that's gonna go with him. It's amazing. No, no. So, you know, the upshot of all this, guys and ladies. Um, by the way, I want all of you college students to read the comments. I have told all our viewers to hold their comments all about aging and what would make them feel great um, from the grandkids. This is how you're going to be making your grandparents be more relevant, loved, and that's the biggie. Just um, trying to summarize what we've said. But from my point of view, kids, that means you in the back too. Um, <laughs> don't expect your grandparents to do things for you. And they will. But it's not just a one-way street. You have to do stuff for them. And it will lighten them. It will lighten you. Keep it going both ways. It takes a little work. When you're first married, it takes work to make that happen. And you probably would ask me how we've kept happy so long in our marriage. 64 years this year. And I will tell you straight out, we go out to dinner twice a week. I know it's coming. She go, <laughs> she, she go. Oh, see, you she can't go, even tell it. <laughs> She goes on Tuesday, and I go on <laughs> Thursday. I'll tell you, it takes patience and forgiveness. Listen to dumb jokes no, no, wait, patience. I know, I know. You, you, disregard those jokes. But it takes patience, it takes forgiveness, and it takes a lot of love, right? And I get it from you. <laughs> you do. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to make this not too long. I, I know we've done some joking about it, but you know, the upshot of- We're serious. We are serious, we are. Um, thank, thank God that Moosey and I are still here to enjoy all our grandchildren, great-grandchildren, to let them enjoy us. And you know, <laughs> there have been some comments made from grandkids, one in particular, who thinks that I am a cool grandma. Now, what she means by that, I don't know. But I'm trying, and I'm not giving up. What about you, Moose? I'm giving up. No, he's not. No, he'd never <laughs> give up. He can't give up while I'm around. No, no, you keep your mind active by thinking of how you can make this circle of love work a little more in that corner over there. Work it. You think about it all the time. You yeah. know, there's, there's a girl who just got... I don't want to go into details, but there's a girl who just got fourth grade student of the month. Yeah. I want to talk to her about that. I, I want to know about it. She's it's on my mind the next eight time year I old. see her. Yeah. Huh? Eight, eight year old. And boy, does she give Moosey hugs. That's because her parents are teaching her that. So sit down with your mom and dad even, guys. And I'm talking to the students right now. 
and say, tell me some more about your mom and dad. Tell me some more about my grandparents so that I can do something for them. Just let them know you love them, keep in touch with them, and you'll be surprised what you can learn from them if you just engage. God loves us and God loves you. Yep. Thanks for listening to us. Thanks so much for tuning in. And Pam, thank you. Um, this, this really made us feel relevant, believe me. The fact that you even noticed that, that we might have something to give to your students. And students, I hope that you'll go out tomorrow, call your grandparents if you're far away, take them out for a yogurt or something, and I'll bet that you'll feel almost as great as they will feel, right? In the next video, you are going to see me making the leaky twice-baked potatoes. I did film them <laughs> two days ago. Moosey and I already have them, but I'm putting them on the next video. And we'll do a little bit of other things as well. So, <laughs> bye for now. Thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. We love you so much. And God, God bless, bless us, us all. all.